Hi, this is Johnny from Man With A Vision, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. I am finally hanging out with John Ken Johnny in person. We, we were last on Zoom, and I love that connection we have, but I feel like we would have better chemistry in person together. Thanks for hanging out with me. No, thank you for this time. I mean, you know, we only talk in Zoom, and... I finally get to meet you. Thank yeah, you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about this new track because uh -huh. um, not only is it a new track, but you got to be part of another incredible anime series. Um, uh -huh. And you got to reunite with Malay, something that, um, right. you know, this collaboration, you both sound amazing together. But take me into that creative process of, of this song and, and dive me into that challenge. Like, what kind of challenges did you guys face during this process? I mean, you know, the... The animation itself, it's a really a mega hit uh, from the decade in Japan, and I believe it's really famous all over the world, too. So it was really an honor for us to take part in yeah that song with Mille. I mean, she's a fabulous singer. Uh, she's so amazing. Uh, I love her voice. And um, the idea that came up like with two uh, artists collaborating was from the animation director. Yeah. You know, the, the story was like uh, mainly for two characters, a female and a male character. So we, the director uh, kind of thought to uh, make the song, you know, a duet with, mm. you know, two artists, a female one and a male one. And yeah, that's what, how it came up. But um, overall, uh, he really le leaned it to us, you know, all the creation kind of stuff, mm. uh, the lyrics and songs. So it was a lot of fun and it was challenging too. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're really proud what we made up. Now, when I listened to this, uh, actually before that, like you, you, the composer, there was, this was a composer that, that actually produced the, the album Yuki. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about the challenges or how Yuki had you in Malay or the band in Malay mm -hmm. kind of step out of their comfort zones. Um, mm -hmm. because dyna like stylistically, I feel like vocalization was different. The, yeah, the, yeah. the cadence was different Definitely. this time around. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what was that? How important was it having a composer like Yuki on this? I mean, I've been listening to her music a lot. She's like, she like a you know master and especially in Japanese animation you know, music and um, it was really a pleasure working with her. Uh, what was really what really inspired me was how she directed uh, how to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she was like pointing that you have to focus on not only the sentence or the line, but just one note, one letter, mm -hmm. and put emotion in that one note, and that was really amazing. Really inspired me a lot. Um, Overall, but uh, the the arrangement, uh, the sound, uh, she wrote the song, but uh, we had the chance to like uh, build up the composition, uh, yeah, by our band, and she leaned it to us as well, and she really enjoyed what we'd done, and really had a full respect of what we, we we have done, and that was really you know a great thing because uh, the, the song was great, mm -hmm. but what we put in, we were a little bit anxious because uh, we put a lot of you know band ingredients yeah. into that song, <laughs> but she loved it, and yeah, that was great. Obviously, Malay uh -huh. and the band have chemistry uh, yeah. in the past. Uh -huh. So how did this collaboration happen? Did Yuki come up and say, hey, you know, I'd love for you to, to collaborate on this track? Like, did the director of, oh, of yeah. Demon uh, Slayer come in and yeah, say, like, what was that? The director, uh, first of all, started you know, his idea was to have a male artist and a female artist mm -hmm. collaborate together. And he wanted it to be like two sides, you know, the opening, uh, mainly us, Man With A Mission, and the others, the ending, uh, mainly Mille, but also collaborating, you know. He wanted to have the contrast for the opening and the ending. Yeah. Uh, that, that's why how it happened. Now, with your experience with, with, with anime uh, themes, theme uh -huh. songs, how important are theme songs to, to, to anime manga? Anime and manga theme songs. I mean, it's really, you know, uh, I'm an animation fan myself, so I believe that the opening and the ending, it really helps the animation, like, dig into your mind, you know, mm. uh, all the images, the sounds. But uh, talking about, like, the band, what, how is it important for the band or things like that, I mean, animation is a huge yeah, has a huge influence whole, the, throughout the whole wide world. And I believe creation and promotion is, a you know, a different thing, but it, all, it also has to be balanced, you know. And it's really great to have a chance uh, to take part in such a big uh, masterpiece, but at the same time having the chance to 
uh, have a lot of people listen to it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Where do you feel you, you were challenged during the recording process of, of these two songs? Um, <clears throat> like listening to the previous, uh, openings and the ending themes, they're, they're such great songs, you know, every, every, every song is such, so great. So, you know, a little bit anxious about how we have to, you know, <laughs> put into, but <clears throat> I've listened to it a lot and try to find what, could be different you know what could you know how could we differ them uh from our song and yeah what we made up was definitely what we had already you know the band has a man with a mission the vibes and the john like john rise and i believe it really fit the uh this season uh this animation this time so yeah i'm glad what we made up how did you feel your experience working with Yuki uh, influenced you for new material or just like moving forward, like new ways of recording, new uh -huh. new ways to kind of tackle the vocals? Uh -huh. Well, especially it was a really it was our first time like really singing about love and, you know, yeah. like uh, in Koi, uh, I. That's different. You know, in, in Japan, Koi and I is different. Uh, it's like love and like, things like that. But yeah, it was our first time really putting emotion into that kind of, you know, word. Yeah, so, uh, I, we've never done that, but I'm happy that she opened, she opened the door for us, you know. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, it was really a lot of fun to do. And as you reunited with Malay, uh, like I said, it was, it's was it been a while since you guys collaborated. And I think you guys took part in her debut album. Um, and so seeing that evolution of her as an artist, uh, yeah. what was that What was that like for you in the studio when you guys got together? Um, you know, the first time I heard her voice just on, I thought it was like on TV. I never knew her, but uh, she was singing on this opening of another drama in Japan. And I mean, I mean literally, I really fell in love with her voice. And I was like, whoa, who is, who is, who is this girl? And yeah. After that, we started collaborating with her song uh, and our song as well. And I mean, every time I, I'm into the studio and just watching her practice, you know, uh, how to how to sing, uh, starting how to record, it's it's really amazing. Yeah, she has that really genuine voice with such you know good fiber, you know, fabric, full with emotion and you know. Not not only like happiness, but it's really like uh, she has a really diverse, you know, yeah. emotion, how to uh, express her feelings. And yeah, it's it was really great working with her again. Now you mentioned that this is the first time that the band uh, recorded music about Koi and I. Yeah, so like directly. Uh -huh. Yeah. So at the same time, like I feel like the the dynamics of the vocals was different. I feel like you were in a higher range this time throughout uh -huh. this song. Uh -huh. uh, was that a challenge for the band? Is that something that was just comfortable? It's just not something that is used often with the band. Well, uh, talking about first of all the opening, that's pretty high, you know, because I. First of all, I've made it uh, with her voice, mm -hmm. uh, imagining it about her voice. And uh, when it comes to live, when she's not with us, I have to sing her, you know, tone. So it's pretty hard. <laughs> um, but it's a lot, a lot of fun at the same time. And Koi Kogare, I mean, uh, yeah, it's really, we've never done that kind of like collaborating with another uh, artist mm -hmm. and like being on the back choruses and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of fun and it really probably opened uh, a new a, a new dimension for uh, me and uh, Tanaka, you know. It, it, uh, it's a new way to sing for us and it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Mm. Now, I'm curious how different it is working or, or creating music for an anime uh -huh. theme song compared to like one of your own songs. Yeah, yeah. Um like writing a song for animation, there's already a like a solid theme in theory, like a philosophy to follow. You know, it, it, the story is already done, so it's kind of uh, it helps a lot because we have we already have uh, direction to yeah. follow. Yeah, but at the same time, uh, I kind of always worry about how it could be balanced with our band. You, you know, the band has to have a common message with the story itself so um kind of try to find out what would be really natural for us to say in the animation but at the same time i'm a big fan of the story itself so it's never hard for me to you know cling to the story and what else well whenever i write like lyrics for the animation i always i, I really always want to 
understand the whole story, you know? Yeah. yeah. It has to be it has to be a song for the season, but at the same time, it has to represent the philosophy of what the story has. So I kind of read all the comics, interpret myself, and you know, find out what the solution, the theory is. So do you feel like there's more research involved when it comes to like anime theme songwriting? Yeah, I mean, inspiration is really you know important, but at the same time, I believe it's really good to understand the story and find out what you like, what you have in common with you know the the story itself. Now, in the last couple of years, you you guys released two back to back incredible albums. Mm-hmm. Uh, initially, they were I think when we spoke, you were saying like how initially you guys wanted it to be like a, a big album, mm-hmm. yeah. um, but it ended up being two sides of an album. Yes, yes. They seem very different when you listen to them side by okay. side. What was it? What was like one of the biggest challenges that you faced in order to kind of create these two records so in in such a short amount of time? Um, I believe like whenever we write songs whenever we make an album we never really like focus on uh like one uh like genre theme yeah genre thing like one you know subject like uh like before we've wrote a song that definitely kind of reminds you about but we never like uh announce the you know subject, subject that much yeah. but but this time we were definitely talking about this era, what was going on in the world, you know, like, and also, you know, the conflict that uh, the, con- uh, the really, you know, ignited a lot. And I mean, uh, that that was probably the first time we've ever done that. And it, it was really focused on this time of era. So that was really challenging. And at the same time, you know, the reason I never done that, because I, 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 want, I always want music to, you know, be timeless. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, about something, a subject. Yeah. But it was really challenging, and in, in another way, really uh, a lot of fun to do. Just focusing on what we have, and it, it, when you focus on something, you know, generally, it's it's it probably has more power to that you know, for the listeners as well. So yeah, that was a lot. Mm, that was a lot of challenge. In saying that, would you say that it was challenging because? It was a topic that you've never touched, or it was challenging because it it was something that was happening right there and yeah, there. Yeah, I'll I'll say it's the later latter one. You know, um, you know, talking about something it's, sometimes it's really naive, you know, sensitive to do that. But yeah, but I mean, because of that, probably our lyrics were really direct. What we really felt about, uh, not really like uh, saying it in other words or something like that. But yeah. Uh, Definitely the latter one, yeah. yeah. Now I really uh, enjoyed. There's two tracks that really stick out to me on on uh, on part yeah. two, mm-hmm. yeah, on the second album, and it was uh, more than words. That mm-hmm. guitar was incredible from the beginning Thank to you. end. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something like I'm not a guitar player, but like just th- listening to it, it was like I felt like it was something so simple, but it was so big at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. What was that process like for you? Like, did you have that melody in mind uh, before the writing or recording process of the song? Yeah, um, actually, that song was uh, produced and made by the bass player, and he, yeah, he's he's a really good me- melody maker. And um, the song was for a movie in Japan, and uh, he wanted the song to be really happy, but also danceable at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you said, just like being big and also anthem- anthemic yeah, at the same at the same time. So yeah, he chose the melody and you know the the tone of the guitars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just to make it sound pop but persuasive and anthemic at the same time. Yeah. And another favorite of mine was Left Alive, which was like it just from the beginning it felt so big and um, just your vocals like felt like it gave me like Rage Against the Machine kind of vibes and you know I, I just I just love like that power that impact that you kind of had like from the beginning of that song. Uh, how different was that song to to record and and write? Uh, it was a song for a game, yeah, a video game uh, uh, with the same title, Left Alive, and yeah. Uh, we, I, they gave me the script of the, the, the game. Yeah, it was really, uh, pretty amazing. You know, the script itself was really amazing. So I just built up my imagination for like, uh, yeah, what kind of music will fit like this kind of. It was probably a game about, what, for a three D kind of uh, a soldier. Okay. Uh, just uh, walking around the world. Yeah. 
I'm not really good at explaining games. So, uh, <laughs> That's all right. Let's focus on the song. <laughs> <laughs> Let's focus on the song. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, it was a really, it was really good. And, uh, uh, we, I wanted to like make it the digital and hardcore mm. and really, you know, definitely the Rage Against vibe. I mean, that, that band is one of my favorite bands and, and I have a lot influenced by them. So yeah, I'm glad you like it. Yeah. I love that your influences are so broad from Rage to Smashing Pumpkins to like yeah. many other bands. Like how do you have this like big, uh, like love for music, but you're still able to create your own lane when it comes to your own music. Oh, thank you. That, that means a lot to me because, um, like there, there's a tons of bands that I could say that, you know, my favorite bands and I've like, frankly speaking, I think I'm really a big fan of, the era, you know, the '90s. Yeah. Uh, what what happened in the '90s? Yeah, that that era was really, yeah. They they were challenging, you know. They were really revolutionary in making music, and I believe it's in that time uh, music changed a lot, mm -hmm. really, uh, just like it did in the, you know the '60s and '70s when uh, the Pistols came out. And yeah, I'm just a big fan of that era. Uh, what we kind of make in Man on the Mission. It's like a, uh, you know, uh, hybrid rock, alternative rock that has the heritage of that era, but also trying to add something modern, a modern vibe to rock and roll music. So I'm really glad that you say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, to close this off, you guys just kicked off the North American tour, major North American tour, uh, Wolves on Parade, and talk to me about so far these 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 shows that you've oh, had, and never you know. Been to LA. Yeah, so like how how different is it this time around? You know, oh, you man. wrote these two tracks when yeah. touring wasn't really available and now you're able to kind of release that. Uh I mean, San Francisco and Los Angeles, it was really amazing. You know, the crowd was rad. Yeah. So so amazing crowd. Uh it's just great to be back in the states and perform. It, it's totally different from what's going on in Japan right now. Mm -hmm. You know, the Japanese audience, they still have they're still having a hard time like Still wearing masks, you know, every audience right now. Um, I'm sure it's going to change soon, but well, when we came to America, well, we heard about that from other bands, but everybody's like normal, you know, yeah. they're enjoying it. And it was really great, the energy. And it's been like, what, six, probably more than four, five years mm -hmm. since we last came uh, to the U.S. And I think it was like 2019. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's like four or five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like everybody was, I felt that they were waiting, you know, mm -hmm. and they react so, so well. Uh, we really, really appreciate it. Enjoyed it yeah. a lot. Awesome. Well, congratulations with the new releases. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you again for hanging out with me. Have the best of time on tour. Enjoy it. Enjoy this. And uh, thanks for hanging out with me. You guys yeah. be sure to check out Man With A Mission. Uh, new music is out now, currently on tour. And thanks for watching here on Front Row Live.